Hey guys, Steve here with another CG Geek Blender tutorial. That's right, another one in the last two weeks, just to further prove the point that I'm actually back from the dead and uh, making more content. So, in this tutorial, we will be creating a modern house. Um, this is going to be the first of its kind for the uh, the channel. I haven't really done much of this yet, and it's a really fun project if you're interested in getting into architecture a little bit, or just looking for a fun project. It's a lot of fun to create um, architect and uh, modern houses. So, a very popular render among CG artists, so I'm going to be showing how to do that today. Um, now, I'd say this tutorial is geared towards intermediate to beginner. Maybe after uh, a month or so of playing around with Blender, you should be able to handle this tutorial without any difficulties. And um, I'm only going to be covering the modern house design shown here, not the uh, the environment, so not the trees and grass. Um, if you want to create the trees and grass, I have a tutorial here for the uh, realistic trees that you can create your own. Or if you'd like to purchase the nature asset pack, the realistic tree nature asset pack I have here, for just 10 bucks, you can get all four trees um, and they're ready to use with rigs and everything. Uh, same goes for the grass and stuff. I have a tutorial for that and also a nature asset pack for that too, just 10 bucks if you're interested. But uh, no more talking, let's get on with the uh, the tutorial. So, hopping into uh, my scene here. Um, first, I'm gonna set up a few things for this scene. It's going to be cycles, so we'll change it to cycles and I'm going to be using an HDR map for lighting, so I'm just going to get that out of the way and set up right now. So go use nodes, change it to environment texture, and go open. So I'm going to be using a uh, an HDR from uh, HDR Haven. I'll give a link in the uh, the description. I'm just going to use the 4K version for now. But yeah, it's one of the free ones on HDR Haven, dry field. Um, there'll be a link so you can find it. Okay, so now if I go to rendered view, we should see that HDR in the background as we do, so perfect. Um, this is kind of so we can set up the materials as we go and see how the lighting is working. So the last thing is going to be um, setting up the color management. Go ahead and change that from default here over to filmic so we get more of a filmic look and we're kind of setting up our properties um, and materials appropriately for the, uh, the color. So that looks a bit better. Awesome. I'll go ahead and delete, well, you know what? Let's use this default cube, why not? First off, let's bring in our floor plan. So I have a floor plan design here available in the description again, where everything is. If you ever if you ever can't find anything, it's likely in the description. So I'm going to enable background images. Drop that down, click add image. We're going to open it. And uh, as you can see here, it is just a basic floor plan for a pretty simple modern mobile home, I guess you could call it, because it's a pretty small house that uh, is transported around and place wherever you want it. <laughs> so go ahead and open that design. I'll have a link to it. Um, and let me see here. Let's rotate this so in top view it is facing us. You can rotate with the rotation option right here. So just give that 90 degrees and that looks uh, look, looks pretty good. So we can just leave that as it is now. And we're going to start with the porch. So the porch is where we're starting. And uh, hmm, let's kind of scale this up to uh, to be about appropriate for what we're going for as well. Scale is right here. Let's just make that 25. That looks a little better. Now um, I'm going to have to quick open up my, my finished scene on the other side here just so I can kind of reference it. I'm going to scale this cube down, just a basic scale. Grab it over where we have our, our planks here. I can close the properties tab now. Go to front view. And whoops, that's another thing I want to change is in your properties tab. Make it so the background image is only from the top view, right there. So now when you're in top view with number seven, you don't see it. When you're in front view, you're good to go. Okay, um, another thing is I didn't start my display. There you go. Now you have the uh, the keys there. Oh, a few people are asking how I do that. That's just the screencast keys add-on. Uh, you have to enable the script. All right, so in top view, I'm going to kind of place this cube, well, dead center, I'll scale it along the x-axis, just lining up this plank appropriately with the uh, the floor plan design here. Go to front view, let's scale it along the z, down to about a, a deck board, and that looks pretty good. Now before I start duplicating this all over the place, 
it, uh, it saves a lot of time to just add the material to it and unwrap it at this point. Let me scale it down just a little bit more. Uh, I think I want about six boards before here or so. Let me let me see here, actually. No, um, I'm going to have... I think this is about the right size. Scale along the X. Um, I'm not sure if this, this porch is the exact same design as I did in my uh, final render, so I'm just going to kind of wing the porch a little bit, but we'll use this for the uh, the floor plans. So yeah, before I start the, uh, setting this up, I'm going to add the material to it just to make it um, easier to duplicate. So go ahead and tab, U, and we'll just unwrap it. We'll split our screen here, split it again, and in the bottom one we'll open up the UV image editor. We're going to open an image, and this will be our first texture used. The textures used are from CG Textures with links in the description. But yeah, I'm just going to open up this board here, and um, I'm going to select just the center ones here so we can see what, what these are. And then I'm going to switch this to node editor up here. There we go. And we'll go materials over here. Use nodes because this was the cube before we have to click that. And then we have a material right here. So uh, let's add in a texture. So shift A, texture, image texture. Connect that up there. And now if I switch to textured view here, we can see our texture on there. At least we should be able to. Um, not yet. Oh, it says I didn't put the texture in there. There we go. So now if I scale this up, you can see it's repeating nicely. So scaling it just along the x-axis until it looks appropriate. I'm going to hit period to center that board. Um, you don't want it to look repeated too many times. Um, that's a little strong. Some, somewhere around there. Looks like a good board, in my opinion. Um, and then we might also want to do the edge boards. It's not as important. But uh, if you go to face select mode here, and then select that edge face, um, you can see that just needs to be scaled along the Y a bit. It's thinner. Hold up. I think this needs to be rotated 90 degrees. Scaled along the Y. If this is the way it looks, that's because it's the wrong way. So you gotta scale way down along the Y like so, and then scale along the X. So basically you're flipping it. But there you go. And we have the nice board edge there. We won't need to bother with any of the other edges. I know it's messy, but hey, you can get away with it. So uh, save time. So with that done, we don't really have to worry about the materials anymore until later. It's just the UV mapping and getting the texture on it that we want. So let's go ahead and add a modifier, array modifier. We want these boards to go in that direction, of course. So I'm going to go 0 and uh, crank this up a little bit here along the y-axis. Now we just want very small gaps. I mean, you don't have huge gaps on a uh, porch, but about a 0 0.12 is good. And we'll put uh, we'll put 7 boards on, so or maybe 6. 6 looks good, I think. So we'll leave that there. And that, uh, that will do it for that section there. Now we want it over here as well. So I'll, uh, let me see here, I'll shift D it, pull it over here. Now there's kind of a step that comes along this area here. So I'll raise this up about the height of a board or so, maybe two boards, right around there. And uh, now this has to be scaled way down. So I'm going to scale it way down along the X axis there. Line it up there. And then, of course, we have to scale the textures as well. So scale those along the X, too, until they look, well, pretty good. Similar to that, anyways. And that, uh, that, that'll that do it. So now this one obviously can be cranked up a whole lot to make it all the way down there. So you can see how quickly the array modifier saves time. It's such a lifesaver. I love it. So there we go with that. Now, um, a few of these boards are going to have to be longer and stuff. So we're going to have to start applying some array modifiers. No big deal. That's just why you want to have the uh, the textures already applied. And I think the spacing, let's make it a little tighter. Maybe 1.5. 1.15. Perfect. So now we're just going to go ahead and crank up a few more of these. That looks about right. And click Apply. So now I can take the few boards that I want in this area here. I'm just going to grab those end faces. Hello. I can't. There we go. Grab those end faces. Top view. That one too. Nope. Wrong side. Right there. Hmm. Oh, I'm, I might want to change that right there. Click that option and then you can grab those faces easier. 
Okay, so I'm just going to drag these out to the right length. And then as you might have guessed, we need to scale those textures along the X again to make them look good. Alrighty, if I go to textured view now, you can see it doesn't look too shabby. We have our porch coming together nicely. So just a few more um, options like that. We got to shift D this, rotate it 90 degrees along the Y axis or X axis. Um, change this down to just two. And this will be that step area in there. So th as you can see, this is pretty fun. It's kind of just working with um, working with boards, basically, if you're a carpenter. Like, I do a lot of carpentry myself. Um, working with boards in a 3D space. So it's pretty fun. Um, another thing I like to do, it just makes it more fun and a little easier to see what you're doing, is if you go to N, and I can collapse these things down now, and you go to Display, well, first you need to uncheck uh, texture there. So you go to solid view and then you can choose matte cap. And that just gives you a kind of cool shading. And if you also turn on ambient occlusion, it just makes it look way better in the uh, the viewport for kind of editing your uh, your, bar your boards and stuff. So I like to do that. Oh, it doesn't look like I ever made these a little closer there. So let's pull those in a little tighter. And then I might have to add a... Well, no, I can just pull these out then. So these two, though, we don't want these to be too far apart and then pull them out so basically if you do a bad job with this it doesn't necessarily even look that bad it's like hey yeah, a, a crummy carpenter worked on it doesn't mean it doesn't look realistic so that's the fun part that's the fun part about this all right so we got a few more to do here so i'm just going to shift d rotate it 90 degrees along the z as you can see the ambient occlusion is really cool when you're modeling there it just makes it so much more fun all right, I'm going to switch to textured view here too, because these will need to be tweaked. And I'm going to scale on the Y, scale on the Y, way down, pull it over there to fill this gap here. Uh, escape, let's just pull it out. I don't know exactly how big it needs to be. A little easier to do this from the top view. Maybe hit Z to look at it in wireframe. We'll just scale it down along the Y until we fit that right in there like so. Not bad. Um, now the texture, like I said, will need to be fixed on this one. So if I go um, texture it again, you can see it's way too big. Scale it down along the X until we have a uh, kind of a decent board-like look. Okay, that one's okay. We won't even really be seeing that one, so we don't have to waste too much time on that. That's the thing. It's also about picking, choosing your battles, you could say. If something's going to be a pain and you're not even going to see it, don't bother with it. It doesn't matter. If you can't see it, nobody knows it's there. All right, so scale it along the X a bit more. And place it right in there like so. A little bit more. Perfect. Well, not perfect. Now it's perfect. And let's fix that texture. Scale along the X. Something like that. Very cool. Very, very cool. And we'll just use these here. Shift D, rotate 90 degrees, minus. And then I'll pull these over here, and this can be this whole edge. And I think, don't don't quote me on this, well, not quite. We're almost there, though. Almost to the point where uh, we're done with the porch. And that's, that's going to be good, because we're making progress. All right, right about there. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can always tweak these things later as well. Just trying to keep the tutorial moving. All right, that looks good. Now we have that other section right here. So all I have to do is shift D this, pull it out right around there, top view to check good, and then pull it down. Okay, so that's basically the porch design. And then it kind of comes up and fits along the terrain there and you'll see. Um, pretty much the design right there though. Um, actually, I think I only have one board on mine. So I could just go count of one on all these Boom, 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 and then grab all three of them and then pull that up like so. Awesome. So there we go with our, uh, I'm going to change the distance on this a little bit. These will be a little tighter together. There we go with our porch. Um, we can move on to the hard surface modeling of the house. Now, this might be a two-parter just so you guys are prepared because there is, there is a lot to go into uh, creating a modern house. Right about that looks good. Okay, so top view. Let's start putting some walls up. 
Now, um, the way these walls are made is basically there are all kinds of like wood shakes going back and forth. So um, it's pretty cool, but um, it's also a little bit tricky. It has to all be done similar to the porch here with the uh, with the array modifier. What am I looking at here? <laughs> you know what? I think no. Hmm. Oh, this is the front of the house here. That's why I messed up. All right. I need to rotate this this way. Sorry about that, guys. No biggie, though. No harm done. Rotate minus 90. Pop it over there. Like so. Now things now things make a little bit more sense. All righty. There you can see it now. Um, I need to scale this all down a little bit along the x-axis. Everything fits together nicely now. I was looking at it backwards. I mean, you could build the house from that angle, I guess, but it wouldn't really work with the way I had the porch laid out. All right, so for the walls, like I'm saying, it's going to be shakes. Is this lined up here? Not, not quite. Looks like we need this board to be removed. Yep, you are gone. And then we'll just duplicate this bad boy. Shift D. Just hit L if you're wondering to select that whole object and then Shift D and pop it into that opening there. Very cool. Now we can add the uh, the rest of the walls. So as I was saying, before I got distracted, I was doing um, shakes across here. So it's kind of shakes with like a black wall behind it. But we're going to do this similar to the way we did the uh, the porch. With first adding in a cube. The cube of Rubik. We'll scale that cube way down. Scale it along the X. A bit more along the X. Till we, uh, till we basically fill that black hole, just the outside, because it's basically the trim. Right around there. Looks good. Hit N to turn off the uh, property tab there, because we don't need it anymore. And then before we go any further, let's unwrap it. So I'm just going to grab all those vertices right there. You unwrap. Okay. And then we're going to do this again, where we open up an image. The image used for this one, let me think. I think it's these planks right here. I do some tweaking to make them look a little bit more red. But that is them. So yeah, let's grab everything actually and just go U unwrap. I'm wondering why it's looking like that. Okay, so all we have to do is select it all and basically just go U reset and we'll have our faces here to uh, scale appropriately. So I'm just going to grab those, switch, well, before we switch to textured view, let's add that material in there just like before. Shift A, add in the texture. Image texture. We can select that wooden planks there. Whoops. Wooden planks. Thank you, and connect it to the color. All right, so now when I go to um, textured view here, uh, right here, all material view works too, but I want textured. Um, we can scale this. If I scale along the Y, are we getting, oh yes, it's working uh, beautifully. Well, for some of the faces anyways, some of them are uh, gonna be wrong, and you're gonna have to scale them down along the Y. Hold up, scale them, well, just rotate them first 90 degrees. Scale them along the X. All the way down to being back about there, and then scale on the Y. Okay, because so, some of the faces are just rotated the wrong way. So check that on all four sides. That one looks good. That one looks bad. So rotate that one 90 degrees. Scale it along the X-axis, so S and X, just in case you guys aren't keeping up. And then scale along the Y. Alright, so let's grab all those faces now. Okay. And let's just scale this to the same length. So scale along the Y to zero. And same here, scale along the Y to zero. Now I can grab all of them and scale them down. Um, they're a little bit off on the X axis side too. So let me just grab that half, just hit and B, scaling along the X to zero. And you can see, well, you can't see. Scaling the X to zero, there we go. It scales them all in order and uh, just cleans up your UVs a bit. So scale along the X to zero. All right, so now I'm going to scale them all together down and just place them over one of these boards. Okay, somewhere like that looks about right. So we have this single maple board that uh, is going across and it's being repeated, but it uh, looks pretty good. Except for the fact that I think the normals are wrong on this because I'm seeing through it. Or my view is weird. Let me just see. If I go to front view. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was I was backwards on it. Okay. So now, you guessed it, array modifier time. 
So hit array and change that to the Z axis, which is the bottom one. And we're gonna go about 1.0, well, 1.1. And then crank the count up. Um, 1.1 might not be quite enough, maybe 1.2, just to give that nice gap there. And this might be, uh, might be tweaked a bit, but I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, not too bad. Maybe scale it just a little bit more. Fit it in there. And then uh, go to top view, scale along the Y, or X, I should say. A little bit right about there. Very cool. So now, um, now I'm just going to kind of estimate how high I want this to be. It can be tweaked later on. Um, and how much gap I want as well. That can be tweaked later on too. But uh, let's just go with a 1.24. Alright, so that looks decent, I think. Perfect. Now we can shift D this, rotate it um, minus 90, and move it over to this wall as well. Um, right about there, sitting on those planks. Um, and then here I'm going to need to scale it down again. And just a shortcut might be to cut it. Control R, cut the text, um, the uh, object right there. And then um, just delete all those. Now, these aren't capped off on the end, but it doesn't really matter because you can't see them. And you can just face them off with F. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so basically we only need these boards on the few angles that we can see. No point in wasting time adding geometry and stuff to areas you can't even see. Um, now I'm going to need to scale this down a little bit along the Y here. Scale along the Y a little bit more. Just kind of fitting it to that line there. That should be good actually. I can shift D, rotate it 90 degrees. Place it in there. All right, we'll just kind of place it like that. Because I'm going to use the same method I did before where I cut it. So I'm going to control R, a few cuts, so I can then choose these to delete. So it's just control R and then the scroll wheel, if you guys are wondering how to uh, how to manipulate that. All right, now I can use these again. So just hit L, shift D, rotate 90 degrees, and we'll just kind of, well, actually, I don't need these anymore. I think that's, I think that's all, because it's black then. Um, I'm just, I keep looking over at my finished render because I need to make sure I'm doing this right. It's been a, li been a little while since I did it, but it's looking good. So um, let's work on some actual walls instead of just the uh, the finish to the walls. So we're going to add in another cube. Scale that cube down to about so. Scale on the Y to about so. Um, now I'm going to tab into edit mode, grab that end right there, pull it back to about there, extrude it, um, hit E, and then you can pull it out right about there, to about so, and then we can grab those vertices, hit E again, and extrude out this wall. So um, it's basically like working with blocks, I mean, it's it's fun, I like it. It's, um, it's kind of like working with Legos or something, you know, where you can uh, just move chunks around and basically build a house. Okay, so that's good for there. Um, let's grab a section of this wall here. Um, let me see. I think I'll just grab... Well, I'll just add another cube. So add cube. Scale it down. Scale it up a little bit. Right around there. And then scale it along the Y. Well, I'm sorry, X. I always call it wrong. It's like... No matter what, I'm going to say the wrong axis, so I shouldn't even try. <laughs> Alright, so right about there. Good. Very good. And then I'll just shift D it for that section right there. Grab that face. Drag it over there. Perfect. And then uh, I can control R. Add in the cut I need right there. So then I can grab that face. Well, I need to switch to face select mode there. That face in top view. And extrude that wall out. Now that's about all we need because we're not going to see any more of that. So that should should pretty much do it. Um, I have kind of a thinner wall here, so I'm just going to shift D that face, scale it along the Y or X again. There I go. I got it wrong. <laughs> and 
and extrude it out to there, extrude it a little further, and then I have that face there to extrude that way. Cool, cool, cool. All right, now we can give them some height. So just grabbing those top faces, like so, and pulling them up. Very quick and easy. Whoa, we have a little problem here. Um, oh, I missed that face, I bet. Yeah, yeah, that corner face. So just top view, grabbing those faces like a boss. All right, and we'll pull them up to so. This one needs some height to it as well. Give it some height. So there is our building so far. Now we have a door cut out right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of modify this array. We need to, of course, apply it first. So I might give it a few more just in case. And then apply it. Can't be applied in edit mode. So apply it right there. So we're basically going to cut the door out of these, uh, these wooden planks. So do that. It's very fun. We use the knife tool. You hit K. And uh, right about here will be where I cut the door out. So you click. And you hit C to hold it as a constraint. And then you also hit Z. So you're cutting through the whole object is important. And then uh, you can click again and hit return after that. And you made your first cut all the way down. So very, very quick and easy. And I'll do the same thing over here. So hit N, or not N, K. Um, click, hit C to constraint, and then Z to cut through. And then click again, hit return, and we made our second cut. Now all we need to do is grab all these faces, X, and delete faces. There we go. Now uh, there's no end to these, so if you wanted to, you could come through alt clicking and facing off all of those. But uh, chances are, this won't even be visible again. So you don't really have to worry about it. Um, so I'm not going to. Um, let me see here. Maybe I made that door a little tall, I'm thinking. Thinking it might be a little bit tall. Um, I can just pull all of these planks down a little bit, though. Something like that. Cut a few off the bottom if I want. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Alright, so now... What should we do next? Well, let's kind of work on the framework in here. So we have some uh, some glass walls, some glass uh, kind of beams, not be not glass beams, but glass beams holding up the glass walls, I guess you could call it. Um, so I'm going to kind of copy the same cubes I was doing here. I'll add a cube right there. So Shift A, Add in Cube. I'm tabbed into Edit Mode on my walls here, just in case you're wondering. So it's say, still part of that mesh. And then scale it all the way down to about so. Very good. Face select. Grab that corner and drag her up. If you go to front view, you can kind of see the right height. All right. Very cool. Um, and then just some more of these planks that we're going to have to frame in. So I'm just going to hit L so I can duplicate this. I'm going to shift D it over to our sliding doors here. And... Um, I'm just going to scale it inwards because this is about a half plank. So something like that. And we'll just do the same thing um, over here before the sliding door. And then I'll go ahead and add one at the end here as well. Okay. Same deal over here. Well, I'll just leave it like that for now. Um, now I'm going to add the front facing beams. So go to front view and... Uh, let me kind of see here. These beams are a little bit, a little bit wide, a little bit wider than I want. So let me quick delete these two. X delete vertices. Grab that edge beam there. Let's hit period to kind of zoom in on it. Make it a little skinnier. We don't need a beefy house. That's not, not necessarily modern or cool looking. Um, and I might need another beam kind of across here. Let me, let me just delete that one for now. Hit L on this one, Shift D, drag it over. Okay, there we go. Now we have a floor to work on. So I'm going to duplicate this beam a few more times, just tabbing into edit mode. Hit L when you're hovering over it. All right, and then hit Z. So we can kind of line that up to the edge there. Shift D, drag it over. And uh, I'm just going to leave it at those two for now. 
um, because this might this might be all you need to see right there. Okay, so this is kind of the sliding door mechanism here. I'm just going to grab um, one of these, Shift D, rotate it 90 degrees. Holy smokes! <laughs> I have both of them selected. Grab just that one, hover over it, and hit L. Shift D, rotate 90 degrees. And now I'm going to pick about the same height as the door over there, so you can kind of line it up. That looks about right, a little higher. Very good. And this is going to go across the uh, the whole door. This is basically the top of the door. So all the way over to the beam, we go with that. Very cool. It might be a little low still. I might might grab that. Hit L, raise it up a bit more. Not bad. Okay, maybe even more actually. Just trying to compare to my finished render. And then Shift D it, rotate it 90 degrees. And we'll do the same thing over here. So line that up, grab the end face so you can pull her in. Cool. So we're kind of framing in our house, doing the dirty work. All right, so grab this one, Shift D, drag it to the bottom there. Very cool. And then same thing with this, except it's going to um, it's going to have that door kind of cut out of it. Except right now that door is looking a little big to me. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it all depends on uh, on what you're going for. So I actually think that that might. Well, let's just move this one in to the end right there. Just a little tighter. Cool, cool. Okay, so then in the inside here of the door, we want to um, cut this one right about so. That looks about right. Then I'm just going to hit L. Nope, not L. Grab face select, grab those, and then I'll just hit Y to make that its own section, and I can drop that down. And then we'll hit L and kind of pull it over. All right. There's our door, guys. Um, not too shabby. Time for a roof, I'll say. Oh, well, you know what? Let's do the floor first because we can see inside of it right now. The roof would kind of kind of block that view from us. So the floor is just going to be a big plane. Pretty simple. Scale it up to about the appropriate uh, width, and then we'll scale it along the X for the appropriate length. That's about perfect. All right, it wants to be a ceiling, but it's a floor. Drop it down, and we have a floor. All right, we can add materials for that later. Um, I'm gonna kind of work on the angle of the roof now, though, because our roof is angled a bit. So to kind of set that up, actually, it might be easiest to just duplicate our roof. I mean, our floor, the floor that wants to be a roof. <laughs> now it now it finally gets its lifelong dream of being a roof. Um, and I'm going to just kind of scale this to be the uh, the roof. So just so we kind of have something to work off of. So I'm going to scale it along the Y. I'm going to hit Z as well so I can see what I'm doing here a little better. And basically, scale along the Y a bit more just to, so it covers out to this point here. That's what I'm looking at. All right, scale on the Y. A little tip, if you want to do fine-tune scaling, hold Shift and it just... Makes your uh, makes your cursor move slower. All right, so I want the angle to be nothing major, but uh, something like that. All right, doesn't look too bad. Very good. And now the roof does actually continue to the end of the porch here. So right about that, scaling along the X is gonna do it for me. Good. All right, so now we can go ahead and um, add like our rafters and more of our framing and stuff around those rafters um, because we kind of have that angle to work off of. So let's add the rafters first. So like any house, you need a good rafter and I'm just gonna add in a cube, scale it down a bit, scale along the X, X or Y axis a bit and top view, we'll just kind of match the, uh, the length of the roof here I guess going to the side here kind of helps. Scale along the Y, matching that length. Scale along the Y a little bit more. 
Good. Scale on the X to give it that narrow rafter on edge. Very cool. Kind of pull it up a little bit. Scale along the Y a little bit more. And there we have it. So now I'm going to duplicate it with another array modifier. Uh, this time we're going to be going a negative direction. Or I could just start at the end here. And then we'll be going positive. Doesn't really matter. Um, let me see there. Okay, looks good. I'm going to give it, oh, about two and a half feet, I think is code. <laughs> I'm totally not sure about that, but I'm just guessing. Um, and then I'm going to raise it along the Z a little bit so it follows the, the angle of the roof. Something like that. 0.15 looks about right. And then we'll just give as many as we need to cover the, uh, the length of our roof. I'm thinking I can spread them out a little bit further. I think I'll go 16 and then spread the distance out. Holding shift to be right. What about there? Uh, maybe go 15 rafters. Well, 16. Nice even number. Looks good. Okay. So we have our, our roof layout. Um, rafter rafterified. <laughs> I just made up that word. Um, now the next step would be to kind of frame the, the outside of them. So those are framed with basically the same thing that's the uh, the porch boards. Uh, same with this section here. It's framed with basically the porch the porch boards, I'm calling them. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one over here because it's already a shorter length. And we'll just grab it, move it up over here. As you can see, that ambient occlusion really helps to kind of let you know exactly what point you're at. Sometimes it can be hard to tell. Um, I hit period to kind of focus on that. It really helps just to, um, yeah, keep you organized, I think. You can see kind of distances easier with that ambient occlusion on. And it just makes everything more fun, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and go Control-R, cut that at the right size, and do the cheaty method of just deleting that. That way is if we didn't move that, um, whoops, delete faces. That way is if we didn't move that center edge much, we don't have to, um, don't have to, what don't we have to do? We don't have to change the texture map. Okay, so I'm going to increase the, uh, the array modifier here a little bit. Crank it up. About so. Cool. And then just crank them all the way up. So these boards will follow all the way up to the top about here. Looks good-ish, I'm going to say. I'm going to say that will work. Well, we want one less. Awesome. Okay, and now I'm going to, let me see here, maybe, maybe these have to be scaled down a little smaller. So I'm going to scale these along the Y a bit, pull them down. There we go. And so I can get two coming across there. Perfect. Maybe um, scale them up just a little bit now. So you can take some liberties, make a few changes. Um, nothing too scary about that. But you can apply the array modifier now. Grab those two end faces, and these have to cover the whole length of the front of our house. Covering up those rafters, the uh, kind of the fascia boards. I'm going to rotate it now to match that angle. And uh, place it right over it, like so. Now here you get kind of an interesting look, because it's going to be overlapping a little bit. But uh, no big deal, you can just kind of pop this one back a little bit. Kind of making that hang over the front, or you could even knife that straight, which I might, I might do. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave it. You can knife it across there like a miter cut or something. But um, it's not too bad. And I might actually raise this bottom one just a little bit, and then raise this one a little bit too, just like so. Cool, cool, cool. And then um, on the end here, we need to grab this board for the uh, the cap at that end. So just shift D, pull it up, pull it out a little bit. This one needs to be scaled along the Y, like about so, and then place it in there, just right. Okay, get in there. This one's gonna have an account of two, except I need to separate it. So I'm gonna go P in edit mode, separate by selection, and then give it a count of two. Two, grabbing that one, a count of two. 
Cool. Grab it along the Z and pop it down. It also has to be scaled along the Z a bit. Now the one thing is when you do the, the P and separate by selection is can it use the origin point from before? I want to transfer it to my new one. So I'm just going to hit L, select it, shift S, cursor to selected, and then object, transform, origin to 3D cursor. So I just move the origin now to my new object. Scale on the Z here, right around so, and grab it down. That looks pretty perfect. And then, like I said, we're going to have to change the texturing on that a little bit. Switch to texture mode. You can see it's pretty tight. Scale along the X to make it a little bit more spread out. Not too, uh, not too shabby. This one, too, is going to need to be spread out quite a bit. Let's grab both of them right now and just do it. Um, it's basically these faces. And I want to switch it to my other material here, too, so I can see more what I'm doing. Very good. Save it. And scale these along the X so we have our material coming across there very nicely. So our house is coming together. Very cool. Um, and uh, we're making good progress. So let's start working on more of the finer details, getting the, uh, the interior walls built. Um, little areas like this might need to be touched up as well. But uh, just like a fine carpenter, you can come back and tweak it as much as you like. <laughs> as a uh, homeowner likes to say, a house is never finished. So um, <laughs> you can be tweaking things forever. All right, let's just scale it up a little bit more. Scale it up a little. Whoops, I switched to rendered view. Okay, I just wanted to scale it along the Z a little bit more. Cool. So um, first, let's kind of finish our framing here. Now that we know where the ceiling's at, we can raise the bar a little bit. And um, I also need to kind of put the uh, the framing on top there. This wall here needs to come up a little bit more if we're happy with that roof angle, which I think I am. So these walls need to be a little taller. And we need to increase the array modifiers on that wall to, uh, to travel to the ceiling. All right, cool. Now this, I'm going to have kind of a section come over at the very top there too. I'm going to go front view on that. Let me see the height of that. Okay, good. Now I'm going to extrude it up a little higher and then grab that and extrude it this way. So you kind of have that coming across there. Now these can go up to the ceiling as well. Roughly there-ish and there -ish. It doesn't matter because the, the final point won't really be visible because I'm going to be um, kind of putting another beam across the top there. I'll just duplicate this one actually and do that right now. So going into wireframe helps, shift D, pull it up, rotate it to match the angles and uh, place it right around there. All right. Looking pretty good. It's a little bit in high and into that. So rotate along the Y a little bit. And pull it down on the Z a little bit. Not too bad. Not too bad. Now this wall can come up a little bit more as well. We don't really have to worry about the angle because we won't even see that. Um, and did I? No, I didn't. So this wall needs that extra extra portion there. So what I'm going to do for this, I'm just, I'm just going to extrude and fill it in the rest of the way like so. Now I'm going to use Control R and put in the cuts where my door is. So right there, Control R here, right there, Control R right there. And now we have the cuts going through it. And I'm just going to use a really simple method to make this really easy. And that is grab both of those, go W and bridge edge loops. And you can see, we just cut a hole in our wall. So a little modeling tip for you guys right there. And uh, it's looking pretty good. All right, so all in all, I'm pretty happy with it so far. Um, we need to kind of model that door down here, make that look nice. I can do that right now. Let's just grab this plane with L, Shift D, drag it down there. Scale it down along the Z. Okay. Fit it in there. Shift D again. Fit it over that. So let's go front view so we can match it nice and identical. 
All right, and then shifty, rotate 90 degrees. Scale on the axle, basically just fitting the blocks and pieces into place. Um, scale on the axle a little bit. Pull it down, grab that face, pull it up a little bit. Kind of kind of making a door frame. Well, um, there's a big window in it, and then a little window up higher. So I'm going to duplicate that. Scale on the Z right around there, and then shift D one more time for the top. Something like that. Basic, but uh, it gets the job done. All right, so um, yeah, let's do the interior walls. So I'm going to go top view, hit 5. No, I'm going to hit Z so I can see through it, and then hit 5. And you can see, very basic design. It just kind of has this little inside wall, which is uh, pretty, pretty basic. So I'm going to use a separate, separate object for the interior wall cell. So I'm going to go into object mode, shift A, add in a cube there. Let's grab it. And uh, I'll just put it right there for the first one. Scale it down to the right width. Scale on the Y to the right width or length. And then hit Z so I can kind of see. Yeah, we got it on the ground there. Perfect. Grab that top face and drag it to the ceiling. Touch the sky with it. All right. Now I can uh, grab that again with L, Shift D. Match it over on that one there, and then we'll shift D it again, rotate it 9 degrees, and fit it right in there. So we have another wall there. Now this one kind of has a cutout window um, up at top here. So guess what? I'm going to do what I did just with the door, because that is simple and easy. And I'm going to control R, roughly where I want this um, cutout window to be. Um, whoa, that's moving mighty fast okay right around there and then control R again right around oh we'll go about there and then control R whoops not there up here right around there kind of a long rectangular window just grab both those faces hit W and bridge edge loops so we cut a hole in it right there that's kind of cool all right, so that is basically all the interior walls you need, because it's all you're really going to see from the angle that we're uh, we're shooting this at. Um, if you do see through something or whatever, you can just always pull some wall out more. The back end doesn't have to be pretty. It's the inside that matters. Um, so I'm going to kind of add the ceiling beam first, the color, and then the beams. So for the color. I'm just going to duplicate this. So Shift D, pull it down, kind of checking on the inside, grabbing along the Z just until it's out covering those uh, those rafters nicely. Very good. I think it's kind of coming through here a little bit. So scale it down on the X and Y just a little bit. Keep it inside. And then, yeah, for these beams coming across, we're going to do the same sort of tiling that we've done uh, a few times already. And I'm just going to put my cursor right around the center, add in a cube, scale it down nicely, about to so. Scale it along the Y. Hit Z so we can see what we're doing. Scale along the Y a little less. <laughs> Pull it in there, and then scale it along the X as much as we need. Something like that. Now for this one, I'm just going to put the texture on it later because um, I don't have to be modifying it at all. I can leave the array applied the whole time, so it, it doesn't really matter as much. Um, you want to get it to the right length, though, scaling along the X before you really rotate it. It just makes life a little easier because then we can rotate it right about there, place it underneath those rafters. Like so, kind of zoom it in here, scaling it down a little bit more. And okay, now that I scaled it, I need to grab that last face. Place it underneath those rafters there. Perfect. And this one as well. Placing it underneath those rafters all the way to the last one. There's something really satisfying about, uh, about building a house in Blender. I don't know. It's fun. I like it. Um, this one needs to come down a little bit more, so we can see in the porch area there. 
Oh, and that's right too. The uh, the porch plane here does not extend out this far like the ceiling does. This one is exposed right there. Right about that. Okay, so for this now, I'm just going to pull it up to the edge there like so. Add an array modifier on it. Turn it to the Y axis. Turn off the X one there. I'm going to give it a gap of about 1.2. Maybe more. Maybe 1.35. Uh, you can experiment with this value. We want to kind of just let some light through the roof. Because the roof is kind of a clear plastic. And then crank the count up. To something cool. Um, let me see. Yeah. That's that's too many, I think. Let's let's make the count forty-five, and then we'll just increase this distance here until it's about right. It's more like a two, I think, is going to be good. Maybe we'll go forty-six, forty-seven. Yeah, perfect. All right, so we can kind of grab it up a little higher. Well, I think we just need to move our ceiling down a little bit, so it's you don't see them in the inside there. Very good. And then the ceiling as well needs to come back. So I'm just going to hit G twice and slide it right back. Another little modeling tip for you guys there. Double tapping G and sliding it uh, back into place. So now you see we have these rafter type thingies <laughs> going across um, the top and uh, helping to kind of break the light and make it look cool. And it's just a nice little touch. All right. We need to um, we need to finish this up all the way here, and then we need to cut them just like we did for the door. So I'm just grabbing the top four there, Shift D in, and then grabbing along the Z. So copying them, pulling them up. That's all we need. Now I'm gonna do the same thing like I said for cutting them. Hit N for my knife. I'm going to hit Z to cut all the way through. Let me zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole length of it here. So N. Z to cut through, and then uh, yeah, make sure Z is uh, enabled, and then just drag it from one vertice to the other here. Click, hit return. Very cool. Now all we need to do is grab any vertices outside of that cut up here. Not that last one there. We got that. Cool. And then delete them. So X delete. Well, X delete vertex. Let's see if that's looking good. X. I grab that one too. Both of those. X delete vertices. Yeah, and that looks pretty clean. And we just uh, cut that like a miter, miter saw wood. So very good. Um, it looks, it looks pretty good. So let's do. Um, well, hmm. At this point, um, I might want to kind of position my camera and make sure the proportions are looking about right. So grab that camera there, right around here, I'm going to go Control alt 0 to snap the camera to my view. Grab it, kind of pull it out a little bit, grab along the Z, rotate around a little bit, and yeah, I think it is looking uh, looking very good. Um, our, porch is, our porch is going out here pretty far, further than I want. I really only want it to come to here. So I'm going to grab all those beyond it. And delete them. Don't need them. Cool. And then these here at the very back. Let me actually delete those two because I'll just copy a few from the front and bring them to the back. So some of these longer ones in here. We need some 16 footers in the back. So shift D and pull them back there. And then this bad boy, he can come in too. All right. So that's looking uh, looking very good. So that will do it for the uh, the modeling process of our house. These do look kind of bad, so I am going to fix them. Just grabbing all those and facing them off. That's going to do it, guys, for the modeling process of our house. Part two will have um, some of the fine detail modeling inside. Because you can't have a house without seeing some details. Some furniture, some tables, some cups, some, uh, some sinks. <laughs> A sink or so. I think we only need one sink. But yeah, um, the fine details that go a long way in uh, making it more believable. 
So I'm going to do that in part two. Now this video is probably running long enough as it is. So now that that's finished right there, um, I'm also going to grab this wall section here. So we got it right? Yeah. And pull it out to about the exact right length there. Looks nice. Okay, so um, yeah, part two is going to be more of the fine details, and then maybe it'll be a part three, depending on how long part two takes, uh, for the materials, um, fine-tuning the materials. Right now we just ha really have it textured uh, roughly. So um, making fun, making some fun progress here, guys. I'm excited to finish this project up. It's looking good. So I'll see you guys in part two. Bye.